say it's live. It says we're live now. Yes. Um, so probably people will, will probably get in or obviously people will be watching afterwards. Uh, this will be repurposed on YouTube as well as LinkedIn and Instagram uh, TV as well. So everyone, uh, thank you so much for uh, for joining us with day two. Um, yeah, post game analysis. Um, Hindu likes to call it a debrief, so let's call it also a debrief for um, for the uh, the third meeting uh, of the um, facilitated working group for the local communities and indigenous people platform on traditional knowledge. Um, it's a three hour, well, three and a half hour meeting actually. Um, but we're trying to condense that into 20 minutes because not everyone has the time to, uh, yeah, to process all that. And it's also a very technical meeting as well. Um, a lot of back and forth, and aside from the technical uh, equipment, but also like in terms of detail and uh, what everyone is talking about. Um, so uh, again, thankful for having uh, Estebancho and Hindu with uh, with me. Um, they are. Um, Sorry, that I didn't say that last last time or yesterday. They're the first other working group members um, uh, from the African region and the Latin American Caribbean region. Um, the reason why you have them is uh, because they're awesome uh, for one. Oh, thank and, you. And 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 two, like they, they've been for a very long time uh, in the in the indigenous rights in the regime. Oh, sorry, climate regime with uh, working on indigenous peoples and indigenous rights. Uh, so you get a. Try in terms of providing value to people, like um, they can provide the biggest, uh, the best uh, context, uh, at least from my perspective. Um, so, guys, thank you so much again for for uh, joining me today. Um, today we talked about activities four, so it was a very very long meeting. Acti activity four until nine. Um, yeah, like how how do you, how do you, how do you want to tackle it? Do you want to start with general observations, or you want to go right into like four, five, six, seven, eight, nine? Um, it's all up to you guys. General uh, right, go, go yes, ahead. Um, no, I, I think that the, the four, five, uh, seven, nine, because the eight we didn't discuss, uh, all all connected, really, all connected and, and linkages and stuff. So we really not to need, doesn't, uh, we don't need to go to through all one by one. We just can go uh, by, uh, so that's some right. more more technical stuff uh, by definitions or terminologies that has been discussed here, uh, especially that we have been discussing the same thing for many years. Right. Yes. Um, also, yeah. Go ahead, uh, Hindu. Questions will be uh, from yesterday. We give a commitment that what we are expecting from today meeting. Uh -huh. And uh, mm -hmm. I, I think I wanted to update people on that. Uh, we got some interactions from the UN agencies, but we didn't get the interaction from the uh, government or party representative, except from those who are members of the facilitative working group. So I think I deplore that. I really want to the government representative who attending the meetings. Uh, actually, most of them are from developed countries, from Europe. So they should talk because those activities are not only for indigenous peoples and the UN agencies who can implement it. They are for them in their countries and in our lands. So I think this one, we couldn't reach it. And then... Uh, uh, the, uh, the, the, the second, we had yesterday over 130 participants. And today it went very down, about uh, 80 something participants. And most of them are from indigenous communities that attended the meeting. So I think this general discussion needs to be highlighted. Uh, maybe there is a reason, maybe something is not going well, or maybe the kind of consultations three hours or the timing or whatever, it's not adapt to the life of indigenous peoples and to the life of others. So that's take, uh, take us to our last uh, uh, discussion and yesterday discussion when my brother Estebancio said that we need to meet physically face to face because those kind of meeting, it's not our staff. And I'm very worried about the next three days that is still five days, Maybe we will end up by 40 people or only the member of the facilitated working group that will chat among ourselves. Yeah, as a, as a bunch of, uh, let me tag that a little bit into that because I think that's a very good point that, that Hindu is making, um, especially when we talk about activity four, which we started off with today, is train our trainings and workshops, particularly 
on building the capacities of uh, state representatives on like dealing with indigenous peoples, uh, the knowledge of indigenous peoples and indigenous rights. So in, in any sense, like that particular activity would be, should be very interesting to uh, to member states to participate in and, and, and talk about, all right, um, these are the challenges that we face um, or this is what we don't know and this is what we do know. Um, yeah, and, and then also there was, there was a point level, how do indigenous peoples participate in, in the, under these circumstances in those workshops that you're talking about? Um, any any ideas uh, as a bunch of like why um yeah there's this little participation from states at this point uh well i think uh, i think uh personally that uh, <clears throat> uh we even had a difficulties in presence for their participation you know that not only in this process but in other processes as well so I feel that maybe it's like a, they are not uh, having that kind of uh, interest on indigenous people issues, maybe. That's one thing. And second thing is the uh, only these, uh, I'll say, usual suspects who have been participating, but not the, the rest of the uh, uh, parties representative that we would like to see, especially uh, from different countries. Um, that's one thing, and but I just also want to follow uh, the the comments made by our sister. Is that uh, yes, we know that having, for example, uh, uh, many indigenous people from Amazon because they are in there in the uh, in the Amazon because they had offices in the city and one, uh, for example, Koika had offices in Quito, but now they have moved uh, to the communities, and that's make difficult the connection. And um, one of my sisters from Guatemala also wrote to me that she uh, she connected, but um, as uh, what happening to me and 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 Hindu, uh, we have been uh, uh, I'll say not uh, not a uh, stable the internet. So that's what that's things also uh, we repeating because it's what we say yesterday. Now um, <clears throat> about the the participation of indigenous peoples. Sorry, because I'm in the hammock. I hope hopefully that no one gonna be get dizzy watching me uh, <laughs> hey, I'm, uh, I'm not getting dizzy i'm getting jealous that that's what it is yeah <laughs> and and one, one one thing that i i think that uh, the the participation i i go back to to our negotiation at the beginning why we wanted to uh don't know whether it's a diplomatic word to say that educate it educate the the, the party's representative, because we realize that uh, many of us have been for many years, as you say, but parties change every four years, three years, or two years. So when they come back, they need to get updated, or they just make their own decision what they're going to decide as a, as a party. So that is why that uh, that activity came out from that. No, we need to, and then we started discussing. I, I'm very sure Hindu and yourself remember that discussing that we also need to uh, get updated in many issues, but also the, the parties. Now, uh, with the web, because this is this is one. Still, we're talking about the presence in this one as well. Because uh, the, the, the idea was to, to have the interactive discussion. Because uh, one thing is to read a book, other thing the author explain you the book. So if we are talking about our rights, um, our need, our concerns, okay, they read it, our concern, but they don't understand why our communities have concern. Why uh, the grassroots level, we feel that way. Until we say, explain them, or give an explanation to them with examples, this is why, 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 why. But you, you cannot do that in, in, a, in a presentation or, or what you call a ASA, ASA paper or technical paper and stuff. You need a presence. So hopefully, I mean, the uh, COVID-19 will stop and we will have chance to meet with the parties in this activity 
as well. And we can have really an interactive discussion and make them understand our need, our concerns, and why we want to change things. Uh, some staff that they have done differently, maybe we can uh, work out together in the future. This is what I think that uh, is important in this one. For example, uh, uh, the concept not uh, have a 27 October. We are on six. That means 21 days from now on. Now we need to identify people to talk uh, or to be a speaker. Hmm? And I don't know really in two weeks if I when I stop at one elder and say, uh, for example, Hindu, who is the busiest one. Hindu, do you have time for 27? Probably she will come. No, I have time in December. I mean, because we have, uh, how you say, uh, uh, commitments, different commitments. You know, uh, we have other works to do, uh, maybe with the community itself, uh, maybe with the family, maybe with the other uh, processes. So this is really uh, is uh, I I I today when when I saw the first time and also see again today in the morning. I was feeling like a under pressure. It's too close. And May how we point before I, before I miss it because what okay. you say really very very important is Tibencio. We cannot stop an elder and say like oh in the twenty seven uh, yeah, we have a panel. Do you want to, to be there? So for <laughs> people that are working there, other from the government representative because they are focal point on it, this work or other from the UN or other from the NGOs, it is them job. They are doing mm. that to get paid at, at, at the end of the month, or they are doing that as volunteers because it is passionate in them, but it is them work. So they can just open the calendar and at 27, we will have a workshop on that. For our communities, it is not the same. Our elders who have the knowledge and who have all and who's supposed to be in these discussions, they have them on plan. And specifically in this time of COVID, like in all Africa, they are float everywhere. And then people are running to found way of saving them land, saving them farms, and having the food for them families. They have this opportunity maybe to plan uh, and, and, and other adaptations or resilience system for them communities. So when you go and tell them that, oh, there is online meeting, I will provide you my computer or my phone, come and sit down and talk over three hours, I don't think that it's really, I mean, I, I can't go to my elders and ask them. I feel that very shameful because it is not the priority at all. So that's thing we have to be clear on it. We are not paying to do that. So for them, it's obvious. For us, it is not at all. And it's also coming to your other point, Estebencio. Uh, we talk about the language barriers. So they say, oh, we will make sure about there is a language. The elders that who know the knowledge in my communities, they speak only full, full day. So only my mother tongue. And some of the things I cannot translate it even in Arabic or French and not at all in English. I cannot dream about it. So if I take them, are they going to provide the interpreters on full, full day to do it in order that the workshop go well? I don't think so. If they're going to take someone like me who can try to speak French, English, Arabic, or one of the UN language that they can provide interpretations. So we are still in business as usual in this activity for. So that's why <coughs> it's not a face-to-face. -face, so we are failing in this activity for. I leave you to move to the next activity. We are taking a lot of time. No, no, that, that, that's okay. <laughs> and th thank you so much. And maybe it's something that could help you as well in in in, in in the whole discussion is that uh, if you and you recall in in um i think in cop 23 in, in bond that we 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 outlined also our principles and one of them is self-identification uh, according to our own processes um so which includes that um yeah like you need to have the time uh, to take the time uh, to, for us to re reach our elders and talk to our elders because um yeah like we have our own timelines uh we have our own uh, our own response 
our elders mm -hmm. have our own have their own responsibilities as well. Um, so that could maybe help you in, in your in, in your conversation as well. Um, we talked about uh, activity five as well, outreach and dissemination, and it's mostly talk um, trying to get Indigenous peoples into the conversation. I got one question um, that was sent to me by by via text, and I just wanted to, wanted to um, yeah see how you respond to it. Um, like um, that person says, I miss how the Indigenous Peoples Caucus is included in, in this in this whole uh, in this whole conversation. Um, the, the the meeting is mostly between FWG members uh, and and some participants as well. But like the most of the Indigenous Caucus participants are not participating. Um, any as you are representatives, um, how do you how do you uh, reflect on that? I think it is please. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, Hindu. <laughs> I, I can just say, I mean, it's a facilitative working group, activity three. And uh, at the beginning, the state wanted to keep it only among the 14 members to discuss. And as Indigenous People Caucus, we say, no way, our meeting needs to be open to all observer and to the Indigenous peoples also to be there. And then we give them no chance to have it open. That's why we have this meeting open. But in the principles and rules of the UNFCCC, they keep firstly all the 14 members that represent our seven regions to discuss first. When they have no questions, they open it to the rest of the participants. So they feel that we represent all our regions and then uh, I, even we have the caucus there, we also part of the caucus. That's the understanding of what they are saying. But however, the rest of indigenous peoples that are participant attending, they all represent the caucus because our caucus is for the indigenous people's caucus. There is no name mentioned for the members, for the non-members. We are all part of the caucus. This is my response. But I, I, I'm sure that my brother Sebancio can complete this with his very energetic. <laughs> energetic. Hey, I'm, I'm quite excited to know that we receive uh, uh, by chat a question also like, like the facilitate working group. Anyway, I think that uh, it, it is a good question, but it's depending how you see. For example, for, example, for me personally, I think that uh, uh, one part I agree totally everything what uh, our sisters say. That's one part of how to participate as an indigenous caucus. But we also have to understand when we get as a member of the facilitated working group, we cannot talk as a caucus because we represent our regions. And, and also that's one thing, the caucus need to high like express themselves and who should be there. For example, uh, we have a Grayam at the moment, is still as our uh, co-chair uh, with the Juan Carlos. Uh, Juan Carlos is not participating because he's, the, he's in the jungle uh, and also having a, a, a family situation for the COVID-19. So, and, and, and that the way to do. But also, like uh, just uh, before, because everybody get active when things happening. You know, and people send me a message and say, how can I participate? I want to say something, but I am only watching for YouTube. I say, I cannot say how you can, because you, are, you need to be registered and to participate. For example, I know that uh, some people by chat, uh, privately, it call, I guess, they send me and they say, uh, what about that? Because the, the issue that we see amongst us as indigenous people, most of the time is that we are not reading. We are not preparing ourselves. And then when you come, you really don't know what exactly happening in this discussion. For example, you say uh, today that, uh, or someone wrote, uh, we don't see many indigenous people participating, you don't just to facilitate working group. The question is, but as our sisters say, but they are providing you opportunity to say something. But you are not taking the floor. No? I mean, I, I, we know that we have commitment, our responsibility to highlight, but also the, the facilitate working group three, this is the not only place to do that. Uh, we all have had opportunity to provide input to the secretariat regarding to different activity, to survey, or, or, or the other ways to 
uh, to express our point of view. Uh, as now they are asking, okay, I think that uh, <clears throat> we we need to be more active. We need to, uh, as an indigenous person, and I say you can do it as a person or as a group. It's, it's no matter. Send your comments to the secretariat. What you think? If you think that you can uh, provide uh, an example of the good practices. You can you can send a, a message or, or essay about that. I think that that's fine because you have the right as an indigenous person, as you say, self identification of as an indigenous person. You can do that. I mean, later on, as a facilitated working group member, we will see what we are doing now is just uh, checking or trying to go through everything and see. And it's no time left really you know because uh can you imagine it's it's almost it's, it is 12 documents mm -hmm. concept not and some of them have a technical paper so concept not normally is three to four pages 36 36 pages and, must, for more, and also technical paper so i mean you have to have time as a as our sister Indu say, you know, if people are paying for this, I mean, I'm going to read everything. But you, I mean, I, what, what we do now is uh, take our chances when we are free, bah, bah, quickly, and we don't deeply read. For example, I'm, I'm watching, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really, I'm, I'm looking at my notes, you know, we're talking about the Activity 5 uh, training material. And one thing is, it's true, we need to, mindful is can we produce the material can we do that and if we produce the materials uh -huh. are they going to use them who uh -huh. will use the and materials that's, yeah that's we one thing the second thing can we prioritize and how we do that you know so those are things that is still it this activity needed to have in-depth discussion and we didn't do that because it's no no time and the time is no left time you know i mean you realize i mean you know i understand because we don't have time but anyway but i think that that's important thing that uh, people need to take into consideration into account that uh, we really need to uh, to be more realistic the work work we're doing we cannot do the as a hindu say yesterday uh, check box cannot do that you know because then the the box gonna be checked but we didn't e even produce uh, any paper and that's what we cannot do we do i would i don't want to see this like a, no we give opportunity for indigenous people but they couldn't produce or the facilitated working group couldn't produce things you know so we i think that need to prioritize and be careful what we can provide yeah, I I 100% agree with that. Before we go to like, seven and nine, is that like uh, there was a there was a slide and Jane, uh, uh, um, vice vice chair, the indigenous vice chair, um, um, shared it, and there was a very long list actually, at least a longer list than I expected, and which is okay if if, if you have a list, but then um, you they also, it was it was also indicated that the deadline would be like end of this year to provide all the all these documents. And mm -hmm. that, that's, it's it's okay to be um, ambitious, but you have to also be very practical and very be uh, somewhat realistic. And my question is also like like why? Because you open it up for like to become a Christmas tree because you want to add <laughs> things to it. And the question is like who who's going to write all this? And and like you like you said, you know, is it be going to be only academics or institutions? And where does the Indian peoples uh, fit in into the, in, the, in this whole equation? Because uh, we want. Yeah, the, the documents and training materials that, that to be include to include indigenous people's perspectives, and we saw in the in the in the chat a lot of documents going back and forth, CBD, UNFCCC, mm -hmm. and but not one was for all right. This is from indigenous peoples. Um, so I think that is um, yeah. I think we're all trying to. That's the feeling that I get. Like everything that is trying to cramp up until the last final months of of this year, and trying to do as much as possible as uh, as and try to abide by the. Um, um, yeah, how do you call it? Uh, with, with the timeline that, that they, they are, um, and that, that the UNCCC is imposing on us. Um, all right, 
And then quickly, um, activity was seven and nine. We, we, before that, we started talking about engagement of Indigenous peoples in UNICEPC. Um, there will be uh, there's an idea of having a half-day dialogue on possible recommendations for that. Uh, there's not a concept, concept note on that yet. Um, when then we, we went, down, went deep into activity seven, um, mapping out the participation of Indigenous peoples in climate processes. Uh, under and side of the convention, um, they will uh, talk about technical papers, and then we came into a discussion about like, all right, good practices. Of, uh, so, what is good practice, and who determines the, uh, the what's good, and, and and that's where you see um, the the UN lingo, the UN language, um, uh, having coming into some kind of like. Um, uh, collision with with uh, with how indigenous peoples are experiencing it. As so I like, well, um, as in like you determine that's a good practice, but like that's according to your uh, measurement. Um, so like any anything that you um, would that stood out from that conversation that you would like to highlight uh, in this uh, brief uh, I, moment. I think from all what we said from activity seven to activity nine and all. At the end of the day, if we just to like stand back and ask ourselves, what are we benefiting from those activities in practices to just to stop the climate change or not to stop, to reduce the climate change or maybe not reducing, to help our communities to get access to the resources or just to get adapt and meet you. So if we just stand back and ask ourselves three years plan or two years plan, three years sitting of the activities that we design the, for the UN and the parties they are going to say, we include the indigenous peoples, we give you the chance, you produce the document, you produce the way you want. But for my people back home who are experiencing flood and drought, who are experiencing conflict, and who are leaving the 50 degrees Celsius. <clears throat> for our peoples like in Amazon that the fires is taking on, or your peoples in the islands that we are having, sea is completely rising. What are the impact of those activities? That's the time I'm just like saying, maybe we are also accepting to be in this game. So sometimes it makes me very mad when I hear all the discussions. Then I say maybe I have to come down and just like listen and input from what they're saying and say what is missing. But seriously, how about producing the technical paper? Because from the activity nine, I can tell you, we have analyzed over a thousand documents. I have the Excel documents who is so big and where you include every single word, indigenous, you include indigenous people with, with S, without S, indigenous rights, indigenous people rights. So you play in this one over thousand documents just to find how much they include us. And at the end of the day, you come back that there are lack of inclusion, lack of participation, lack of engagement, or lack of best practices or whatever. And we end up by playing in a list of the wording. So my, my just a question I'm asking for myself, if we get all these documents, we get all these recommendations, until when they are going to be implemented to resolve the climate issues because we have 10 years only. So it's really a matter of, uh, if you believe on it, you just continue going because maybe you have something to hang on and then ask the accountability for the governments. Or if you get just a, like, there is no way you leave them and go back to your community and make the project implementation. I'm really <clears throat> thinking about all this. But however, it's very productive because we are talking and exchanging our ideas as indigenous peoples, seeing that if the right is missing, it may be very impactful for the long term. We need to put the right in front. We don't need to put like a, a, a maybe a engagement. We have to change this wording. It will be harm us. So then we can play in this wording. Maybe it can benefit us. So I I really don't have any concrete answer to to give you there. But I will continue playing the uh, the, the role of uh, demanding the accountability 
the transparency, the real inclusiveness, and at the end of the day, asking them the real action in our peoples to stop what they create. Yeah, very good, very good point, uh, Hindu. As a bunch of, um, at, yep. at some point, he came in, and and you, you saw like she gave a presentation, and you saw like the 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 difference between the desk research that is taking place and the reality on the ground because she presented presented a document that was mm. um um yeah actually showed like the actual engagement. Uh, they did a study on the inclusion of um Indigenous peoples and NDCs uh, as well. Uh, you mm -hmm. talked about yesterday yesterday about NDCs. Um, how do you look on on to the discussion that was uh, happening today on uh, activity nine? Uh, it, uh, actually, yeah, it, it was two things that I was going to mention. But first, and no, go, go before ahead, go I ahead. go to to NDC, I would like just to give an example of the good practices, bad call practices. Uh, for example, our sister explained clearly. I think it's good. For example, so when we talk about the food security. And then uh, we, as indigenous people, say food sovereignty. Two different things. But what happened at the national level, when they talk about the, uh, we have to provide food security, like now in COVID-19, what they are doing? They are taking rice, uh, they are taking food, they are taking everything. Yes, we have been fe benefit. Our communities have been benefit now for a few weeks for a few months maybe, because the government is providing. But what ha what's going to happen after that? Is why we talk about the food sovereignty, because we need to uh, have the control, uh, the distribution, the agriculture, not only the agriculture, because, for example, the last time in the FAO, no, not the FAO, CBD meeting, but in the FAO offices, we, uh, we, we say, no, we want food sovereignty because they say no that is a political statement i say yes it's a political statement but for indigenous people it's our survival because the food sovereignty is not only political it's uh, cultural it's economical it's transfer uh, uh, technology uh, indigenous knowledge system it's everything then as you say if if you see if you go to, let's say, in one community in Panama or any community in Panama, other indigenous peoples, and they are providing food, it's a good practice because the government or the institution related to that kind of work is providing food. But until when? Then for us, it's not a good practice. We get, we, we, we I always say, get dependent of what the government provides and not producing our, our food. So, okay, that's one, it is why we don't want to call good practices because it's depending how you see in the grassroots level and how you see if someone write an essay and say, ah, it's a good practice, uh, but let's say Guatemala is providing food to the Mayan community and blah, blah, they are happy, eating well, having rice and blah, blah, blah. Everybody probably mm -hmm. say, yes, it's a good practice, but in the long term, that's another thing. Now, going to the NDCs. <clears throat> um, I, I really uh, remember, I don't know where, I think that it was you, your first year, I think, Marrakech. You were in Marrakech? Yeah, no. I remember that we, we went in a meeting about the NDCs. Uh, Tiana, myself, because the NDCs then it was like a, how you say, rock star of the moment because uh, it's the first time came out uh, the report of the blah, blah, blah. When it came out, only it was three countries refer, made reference on uh, and land rights, uh, the importance of collective rights, and indigenous people's rights. But the rest of the NDCs, they didn't even mention the territory or their forests on, or everything. This is, now we get back to the engagement. This is why when I asked to my, my, my government then, I remember the ministry say himself, and I say, but this is not what we want in NDCs. I remember where we normally sit watching people walking around. I was sitting there with him and, and asking questions. 
and he say, we are engaged with you people and with the rest of the other indigenous people. I say, what do you mean engaged? Ah, we, uh, we pay, uh, how you say, um, per diem, they come from the communities and they sit to talk and they are engaged. And doggies, doggies. And they say, and I say, but that's not a really participation. Because it's probably more than two elements. One element is you bring one person from the community and you pay for that person and doesn't know the issue, how developing those kind of things, not gonna say anything. And I say, but then you have to bring people who knows. You have to bring people who can discuss with you with the new policies emerging at the international level. But they are participating. I say, no, but it's not a full and effective participation. It's what we need. I mean, you invite us, my people can uh, pu uh, provide input, ask you a question, whether it's important for them or not important. That's just one example. But most of the countries did that way. And we are talking about the 2014 six mm -hmm. years ago. Yeah. And now we still having those talk these documents and having, uh, I say, um, not referencing, now at least it's three more, Brazil, Indonesia, referring to indigenous people's rights, uh, according to the uh, human rights um, case study, which is not finishing, it's not official, but, but it's a comment from our friend Benjamin. But at least, but uh, it's what uh, yesterday we talked. I say we'd like to see a shadow report. It's probably it's much better to see realistically to show uh, comparative uh, outcomes, whatever, you mm -hmm. know, because if not, then we're only going to see one side, which is going to be difficult because you don't, you're never going to know whether uh, that's true or not. At least if you can come to the uh, communities uh, in the jungle in Amazon or go to Africa, to the desert. And, and, and I don't think that those uh, official ones to go to the desert or the jungle. <laughs> Probably <laughs> scared of that. I remember one, you know, once uh, one, uh, one person was scared of the community because they were so aggressive according to them. So he stayed in the city waiting for the rest of the group. <laughs> so, so I think that, uh, including, I I realized that, um, for example, uh, one of the official of the UN, uh, they the result the results of the survey say that there is a lack of uh, reference of the indigenous people's technology. Hmm. But how this could come out? and not the land rights, collective rights, indigenous people's rights. But then the survey appeared that, and another thing is, but I didn't want to go there. I had to decide, I'm, how can I use my five to 10 minutes just before in the meeting? Because I was gonna say, for example, uh, depending the questionnaire of the survey, many of my communities in Latin America decide not to respond because the question was, more directed to the parties. And they decided, this is not for me. Yeah. This question not for me. And they started seeing that, so they didn't, they just decided not to respond. So that's uh, something that uh, probably need to be arranged the other ways. Uh, is this something it is that why we can talk about tomorrow and and the day of, uh, the, the final days of the of the you want you want us every day here? <laughs> uh, no, no, but I'm like in, in, the, in the meeting. I just kidding. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, to, tomorrow gonna be different. Seems that we're gonna be divided by group. Yeah, so like, I think that's the final question actually, because I know you guys have to go as well, and um, I'm not gonna ask a question. It's Seb actually that that's asking the question. Um, he's uh, from some CL. Um, he's curious to hear what your expectations are from tomorrow's and Thursday's breakout sessions. Um, any any final thoughts on that uh, before I let you guys go? So I, I think that tomorrow's breakout session will give more opportunity for interaction among all of us at the equal way. 
and then uh, maybe the party representative will not just shut down and let us discuss among ourselves, they will interact. And I think from the group that I'm going to be, for sure, if I see the party representative and he didn't say, I will request him to say something because we are there to hear and listen from them. They are the one who are decision makers and then they need just to listen uh, and then shut up. That cannot work. They have to talk. And I'm expecting also that we come up with a great strategy of how we can meet each other soon. Because if we do not meet physically, there will be no consensus. There will be always some who will dominate the discussions and will impose them ideas without consultation of others. And that is not the equity that I'm seeing or the justice that I'm seeing. And I expect also that the outcome of this uh, discussion will not be in the rush. And then we can have time to go a little bit deeper on what we are uh, discussing in all the expectation of the working group in order to report them. All the missing point that we are saying, oh, we are over time, we are over time, maybe we can get time to discuss on them. I'm really looking forward for the tomorrow discussions with all the rest of the group. Oh, thank you so much. Um, Esteban, final thoughts? Uh, I normally, I don't, I don't like the, to divide the groups because um, um, I mean, uh, all of us are one by region, you know, that's made difficult. Like uh, Hindu will go one region, uh, probably I will go another group, uh, but I don't know what's going to happen in, in the other group. I'll go French. So it is not <laughs> Come on, you are just stuck in your hammock. <laughs> I think I think um, his, his his connection uh, was lost. Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, what oh, there he is. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is that uh, uh, you get lots of the discussion. Oh, it's almost gone. Come back. Yep. Oh. Yep. Uh. We yeah, missed you. I'm here. Someone is calling me, but anyway. I don't see his number, so when I don't see numbers, I don't respond. <clears throat> I think it's Hindu telling you to, uh, to hurry up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I saw the chat. I saw the chat. What, see, I agree, but uh, I agree on one thing, you know, that, yes, we can have an interactive discussion and see really what's happening. But what I most agree with here is that, yes, we need our presence, physical presence, to discuss, to make decisions, and to see collectively how can can we go forward? Because we're gonna have more time to do that, or more time to discuss, or try to put our input. We're not gonna do by uh, by virtually. That's 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 a that's not possible. So I don't think that. Uh, yeah, what I expect is that. Uh, hopefully, I think that uh, the the member of the facility working group. I think that they have, uh, including the some of the parties, have been very positive. But I would like to see more from the uh, other parties who are not member of the facilitated working group. It's what we are talking about, not our uh, colleagues who are part, because they have been part of these processes. But uh, we, we don't see, for example, uh, I don't see any Asian member of the uh, parties. Uh, let's say, as an example, well, I could say, well, Chilean is here, but maybe not other group. Mm -hmm. Today, we saw more UN agencies than the parties, as uh, Hindu uh, highlighted as well. But so I expect that uh, maybe tomorrow uh, we will have more parties in order to engage with them, engage with them. We can engage with them. Um, then yeah. uh, then and continue with the work, because we only we still have two days, yeah? Tomorrow and on and, and, and Thursday. Yeah. All right. Um, again, thank you again, <coughs> Hindu Estebancho, for your time. Um, it's supposed to be a summary, but it's like it's getting a, like a, a little bit out of hand. Uh, we've been already been forty five minutes, but then again, like um, it, it's it's pretty good. And anyway, um, so hopefully t tomorrow you guys will be back again because um, uh, I think people are really looking forward to it. Um, so th again, thank you so much, Estebancho, Hindu, for your time, and um, you. tomorrow. Meeting will be again at four. I don't know if I will be there. I have the, the oceans negotiations uh, parallel to that, oh. so I'll probably be listening in. 
um, back and forth. Uh, but definitely do a catch up afterwards. Um, yeah. Thank you so much. Thanks so much, guys. For thirty minutes tomorrow. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> we'll aim at thirty minutes. <laughs> All right. True. Mm -hmm. Have a good day, wow. guys. Yeah.